All right, hey everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today's session. My name is David Frazee, and I'm a program manager on the Azure Network Security Customer Experience and Engineering team here at Microsoft. Uh, today, Salim and I will be covering Azure DDoS protection uh, and how to simulate DDoS attacks against your tenant in a safe and a controlled environment. Uh, for today's agenda, we'll cover the DDoS attack trends that were published from the second half of 2021. Uh, as well as some of the different attack types that are used to take down enterprise environments. We'll look at Azure's DDoS protection standard and go over some of the key benefits for implementing the service. Uh, and then we'll touch on how to simulate DDoS against, uh, attacks against your Azure tenant using our partner services. Uh, then Salim will close us out with a demo covering areas from this session. All right, so let's zero in on what DDoS is first. So DDoS stands for Distributed Denial of Service, and it's an attack where bad actors send large floods of illegitimate traffic to an application or a network, uh, primarily using some sort of botnet to accomplish the disruption. Botnets are primarily comprised of compromised IoT devices uh, and or personal workstations and servers that has some sort of malicious software um, installed where a bot master or a bot herder uh, can control them remotely. The goal is to take down the service by exhausting the application's resources or even the resources of a middle box, so uh, a firewall or other deep packet inspection devices. Uh, this can result in poor website or application performance, or it can knock it offline altogether. The style of attack is one of the biggest security concerns as of today, as it can be costly to your business, but it's incredibly cheap uh, and easy for bad actors to initiate. Uh, so why should you care? Really, any public IP is vulnerable to a DDoS attack uh, and is one of the top causes for service availability for large enterprises. Again, a DDoS attack, if not mitigated, can be costly to your organization due to loss of customer interaction with your backend or from dynamic resource scaling uh, to handle the volume of new traffic that might be coming in. So let's take a look at some recent examples of DDoS attacks over the past year. Uh, the recent tensions in Ukraine have resulted in a lot of tit-for-tat DDoS attacks uh, between Ukraine and Russia. Uh, we see that gaming is a very hard hit vertical with many titles suffering impact this year, including Final Fantasy XIV, Dead by Daylight, Titanfall, um, and titles from Blizzard Entertainment. We've also seen an increase of targets towards uh, voice over IP or VoIP service providers. Uh, and in some of these examples, right, uh, so there was a Minecraft tournament that was hosted in the country of Andorra, uh, which is a small European country uh, between France and Spain, uh, that was ended up being a target of a DDoS attack. Uh, this attack ended up taking down Andorra's single ISP to be completely unusable by their, by their citizens. Um, it, it even impacted their 4G network. Uh, Bitcoin.org was hit with a ransomware DDoS attack where the bad actors demanded Bitcoin or the attacks would just continue to disrupt their services. Um, and that was interesting as well, since Bitcoin.org is more of a um, education, educational type uh, website rather than holding personal or customer data. Uh, Nobel Foundation's official website was a target of a DDoS attack on Nobel Day, where the live stream of prize ceremonies was disrupted. Uh, this attack was reported to police authorities, but there was no evidence of what party truly initiated the attack. Uh, so how real are they? Um, well, in the second half of 2021, we saw an unprecedented level of DDoS activity in both complexity and frequency. Microsoft successfully mitigated upwards of 359,000 plus of unique attacks against our global infrastructure during the second half of 2021, which was a 43% increase from the first half of 2021. What's even more surprising is that we saw that more attacks occurred in quarter three rather than quarter four, indicating the importance of a year-round DDoS protection, not just during the holiday season. Uh, majority of attack duration continues to remain short. One reason for this uh, is because bad actors are trying to bypass DDoS protection by interweaving multiple attack vectors in short bursts. So on top of that, it's very easy these days to launch DDoS attacks by renting DDoS for higher services in a cost of less than $50 per day or less than $150 per week. We did see, though, that attacks that were 30 minutes or less, they dropped from 74% to 57%, uh, 
but there was a rise in attacks that lasted longer than an hour, and that doubled more from 13% to 27%. In terms of attack bandwidth, uh, we do see everlasting increase in attack volume. In October of 2020, Microsoft reported a 2.3 terabit per second DDoS attack that was successfully mitigated. Uh, this increase in attack bandwidth means we need to make sure our mitigation pipeline evolves and is well suited to mitigate the largest ever attacks. Uh, UDP attacks rose to the top vector in the second half of 2021, uh, comprising 55% of all attacks, uh, which was a 16% increase from the first half. We did see a decline in TCP attacks, though, dropping, dropping from 54% down to 19%. Uh, and then so in November, uh, of 2021, Microsoft was able to mitigate a DDoS attack with a throughput of 3.47 terabits per second with a packet rate of 340 million packets per second, which was targeting an Azure customer that was located in Asia. Uh, we believe this to be the largest attack that was ever reported in history. This was a distributed attack originating from approximately 10,000 sources and from multiple countries across the globe, including the United States, China, South Korea, Russia, Russia, Thailand, India, and more. Uh, the overall attack lasted approximately 15 minutes. Following this, in December, we mitigated two more attacks that surpassed 2.5 terabits per second, one being 3.25 terabits per second, and the second being 2.55 terabits per second. So circling back from our previous slide, though, although we saw these enormous attacks come in during the holiday season, still the majority of attacks that were observed were actually during the August timeframe. So this is really stressing the importance of year round protection and not just being protected during the, let's say, Black Friday or the, the holiday season. So let's review some attack types now. Uh, we'll start with volumetric attacks. So these attacks use a massive amount of traffic, which saturates the bandwidth of the target or the victim system. Volumetric attacks are easy to generate either using DDoS for higher services or with attackers, uh, attackers employing simple amplification techniques. Uh, it generates such high quantity of traffic that it can completely block access to the end system, like a website or a service. Uh, these, are attacks, these attacks are measured in bits or packets per second. Um, and some examples of these attacks are ICMP flood, IPsec flood, uh, and UDP flood. Protocol attacks are also known as state exhaustion attacks. Uh, this type of attack causes a service disruption by consuming all of the available capacity of the web application servers or the capacity of intermediate resources like firewalls or load balancers. It abuses flaws on the network layer, exploiting protocols like IP, ICMP, and IPsec, uh, and flaws on the transport layer, exploiting the flaws in TCP and UDP protocols. The most common example is a TCP SYN flood attack. This attack exploits the TCP handshake by sending a target a large number of TCP SYN packets or initial connection requests uh, with a spoofed source IP address. The victim machine then responds to each connection request and keeps waiting for the response to finalize the handshake, uh, but that response will never come because the source has been spoofed. All of these requests stay in an open state waiting for some type of response, uh, and then due to the number of requests, it causes the system to exhaust all of its resources and pretty much become unresponsive. Uh, and then so common attack types, sin floods, uh, ping of deaths, uh, fragmented of packet attacks do. Resource attacks uh, are also known as application layer attacks. Um, they're layer seven attacks that target the backend server. Uh, the goal of these attacks is really to exhaust the resources of well of the target application and to abuse flaws and vulnerabilities on that application itself. For example, targeting how web pages and web servers can handle an HTTP request. So, you know, a single HTTP request is simple to execute on the client side where the attacker would be, um, but it demands a lot from the target server to respond. Uh, maybe they're loading files, um, running database queries or something along the lines based off what the HTTP request was. Uh, this type of attack is a challenge to identify and defend against because the traffic seems very legitimate and it can be difficult to be sure when it's actually malicious. So DDoS by itself does not protect against layer seven protocol attacks. We must use a web application firewall or a WAF, um, such as the Azure application gateway WAF or Azure front door WAF in conjunction with DDoS protection. Uh, and this will provide that defense against all three attack types that we just talked about. 
But so now we'll cover uh, DDoS protection standard. So Azure currently provides two levels of DDoS protection. That's DDoS infrastructure protection and then DDoS protection standard. DDoS infrastructure protection does actively monitor incoming traffic with always on detection and provides automatic attack mitigations. But the threshold for mitigation is set for the platform infrastructure itself and not for your applications. Uh, so these thresholds may be higher than what your application or infrastructure can handle without any type of disruption. And you will not have the added benefit of having cost protection uh, with that comes with protection standard. So DDoS protection standard is a paid tier of DDoS protection, offers a wide range of features such as application based mitigation thresholds, uh, mitigation reports with detailed analysis of the attack, availability guarantee, DDoS rapid response support, um, and cost protection for the resources. Protection is simple to enable on any new or existing virtual network, and it requires no application or resource changes. The moment the service is enabled on the virtual network, your resources are immediately protected. So DDoS protection standard provides great Great key benefits, um, such as utilizing the Azure Global Network to mitigate against attacks, um, adaptive tuning of your application on a per IP or per application basis, um, attack analytics and metrics, DDoS rapid response or DDoS rapid response, and SLA guarantee with cost protection. Uh, and we'll cover these five areas uh, in the following slides. So Azure DDoS protection standard, it does protect resources at a global scale. Uh, covering 62 regions, our mitigation capacity is upwards to 60 terabits per second, allowing us to mitigate large attacks by absorbing and scrubbing them, utilizing the global network automatically. We have measures that can also protect against not only inbound, but if we detect an attack is being sourced from within an Azure tenant, there are mitigation steps that can be applied as well. And as you can see from the slide, we typically are mitigating around 450 plus attacks daily. During mitigation, traffic sent to the protected resources is redirected by the DDoS protection service and several checks are then performed. Um, we'll check if the packet conforms to internet specifications and they're not malformed. Uh, we'll interact with the client uh, directly to determine if the traffic is potentially a spoofed packet um, using some type of SYN cookie, or we might just drop it to force a retransmit of, let's say, the TCP SYN. Um, and if no other enforcement can be performed, rate limiting packets uh, will be initiated. For every protected application, Azure DDoS Protection Standard automatically tunes the DDoS mitigation policy thresholds based on the application's traffic profile patterns. So the service accomplishes this custom uh, the service accomplishes this customization by performing automatic learning of per customer or per IP uh, traffic patterns for layer three and layer four. The longer you have DDoS protection enabled, the more time it gives the engine to adjust to all of your organization's seasonal changes. Uh, it's really easy to set up as there is no user configuration at all for the policy thresholds. Uh, this feature is managed by the service and the platform itself. If the protected resource is in a subscription that's covered under Microsoft Defender for Cloud, DDoS protection standard automatically sends an alert to Defender for Cloud whenever a DDoS attack is detected and mitigated against the protected application. Alternatively, to get notified, um, when there is an active mitigation for a protected public IP, you can configure an alert on the metric under DDoS attack or not. Uh, you can additionally choose to create alerts for other DDoS metrics and configure attack telemetry uh, to understand the scale of the attack, uh, what traffic is being dropped, attack vectors that are being used, who are the top contributors uh, by source IP or by the ASN, and, and then there's other details as well. In the image in the slide, you can see how logs generated by DDoS Protection Standard can be ingested uh, by the Azure DDoS Protection Workbook in Microsoft Sentinel for near real-time monitoring during an attack. DDoS Protection Standard customers also have access to the Rapid Response Team. Uh, this is during an active attack. Rapid Response can help with attack investigation during an attack, as well as post-attack analysis. To engage the rapid response team, simply create a new severity A support request with problem type as under attack. This will generate a new request to a dedicated queue uh, where our team is waiting to assist. 
And the service does come with 4.9's SLA guarantee of the uptime of the DDoS protection service itself. Um, it also comes with the 4.9's SLA guarantee that during an attack, the target resource will not be impacted. Um, and then there's cost protection. You know, it provides resource credits for resources that may have dynamically scaled, such as a virtual machine scale set um, or a V2 application gateway, or even the Azure firewall, which dynamically scales. Um, it, it, you will get 100% service credit if uh, during a documented DDoS attack, your resources were dynamically scaling, uh, and we will just reimburse that for you. All right, so how to simulate these DDoS attacks? The first simulation partner we'll talk about today is Breaking Point Cloud. Uh, and you can see here, this is Breaking Point Cloud's uh, landing page. So Breaking Point Cloud is a cloud-based service for validating the DDoS protection controls that safeguard uh, your production environment that's hosted in Azure. It's a self-service traffic generator where you are the one to initiate the attack against your resources. Now, you're not able to just like generate floods of traffic to any public IP you'd like just because you have a Breaking Point Cloud account. Um, you do have to validate ownership of the resources before Breaking Point will actually initiate that test. Uh, and it's a really easy way to validate ownership. You're pretty much just going to log into the Azure portal using your credentials and any public IP that's in there um, can, be, can be tested against. Uh, so there are multiple test sizes and duration times that you can choose from, uh, ranging from 100,000 packets per second with a 50 megabit per second throughput and four source IPs, uh, up to 800,000 packets per second with 400 megabits per second throughput and 32 different source IPs. Uh, the test can be ran from 10 minutes upwards to 30 minutes, and you can test against TCP SYN floods, UDP floods, um, and DNS floods. And there's many options for the UDB floods as well. Uh, and then our second partner here is Red Button. And so Red Button is a managed service suite that includes three stages for your DDoS testing. Uh, there is a planning session with a dedicated team uh, where they work to understand your network architecture, and then they'll define clear goals and a testing schedule. You'll then run through the second stage where the controlled multi-vector DDoS attack is initiated uh, by Red Button themselves. So you won't be the one that actually initiates this attack. Uh, this attack will typically last between three to six hours, um, but if needed, Red Button does have an emergency stop. So if, if something is out of control, you can just contact Red Button and they will stop the attack immediately. Once the attack is over, the Red Button team will provide you with a written DDoS test report outlining the effectiveness of your DDoS mitigation and recommend any gaps that may need to be closed. Uh, and as you can see here on the slide, this is one page from their uh, report. It's just an example, but we have six different attack vectors. Um, and as, as you can see in the results, some passed, some failed. Uh, later on in the summary, you would be able to see what kind of steps that you can take to close the security gap. Uh, and then now, Salim, if you want to start the demo. Awesome. Thanks a lot, David. Okay, so let me start sharing my screen. Uh, my name is Salim Tseo, and I'll be taking you through the demo steps. Um, I'll be starting with how to configure the Azure EDOS standard plan, how to add the VNet, configuring the uh, uh, loading diagnostics on the um, public IPs, and also investigating the uh, different attacks that we have. So beginning, you know, we are now at the DDoS um, protection plan and specifically under settings, protected resources. Under protected resources, we can see a few tabs here. On the first one, we have the VNet. Now, the DDoS plan protects the specific VNets that you have and all the public IPs and the resources you have under that VNet. So if you want to add, let's say, a specific uh, public IP that's attached to uh, application gateway or you want to protect your virtual machine scale set, VMSS, then you add the VNet that that VMSS is configured under. Now in our configuration, we have two VNets here, and for the sake of this demo, I'm going to show you how to add an extra one, and it's extremely easy. Um, so let's add a virtual network called VT uh, FT. We add this one, and you can see here out there, it will take just a few seconds, and it will add the VNet. And adding the VNet 
means that all the public IPs, um, ARM-based public IPs we have on the LedVNet will be protected. Now, if you look at, for example, um, let's go over specific resources. You can see that we don't have any, uh, for example, uh, firewalls. But if we look under, for example, uh, network interface cards, we have the um, specific public IP here. That's because we have a VM running with this public IP and uh, we are protecting that this VNet, which is DDoS VNet test. And if I look, go back here and I refresh it, or yeah, we can already see the other VNet. And this basically means that your public IPs, all public IPs under this VNet are protected now. So there's from configuration side, uh, from protection side, there's nothing else needed. However, of course, we want to see, for example, um, you know, the, the logging and what's happening if a mitigation starts or there is a DDoS attack. So let's go to the specific public IP. So I'm gonna go to my uh, public IP called APM PIP. Um, and for this public IP, we are already uh, protecting this uh, VNet. So it's under DDoS protection. Now let's have a look at how to configure the diagnostic settings so we can see logs for it. So if I click on diagnostic settings, I will see that I have a diagnostic setting here created called to network security CXE logs. Let me open it. And I can, we can see here that we have three categories and these are the three categories for DDoS logging, uh, the DDoS protection notifications, flow logs, and also the reports. Um, you should always, of course, enable all of them, but that depends, of course, on what you need. Uh, in our case, we are we have enabled all of them and we are sending this, this data to the log analytics workspace. Um, of course, you have also the choice to you to send them or to arch archive them to storage account. You can stream them to an event hub or you can send them to a partner solution of your choice. And the configuration here, you can be, uh, you know, more specific. For example, I want to send them log analytics and I can also send them to the storage account and set the specific retention here, uh, how many days they should be, uh, they should stay there. Now, for our case, we will just be using the log analytics workspace and uh, I'll be sending them to our network security CXE logs, which later I'll show you how we can uh, run the queries and see how the logs look at uh, over there. Um, for the next step, of course, configure this configuration needs to be done on all the public IPs you have. So if you need or if you want to see all the logs for the public IPs, you need to enable one one by one. Or we have also Azure policies, which can automatically enable this and enforce this. And I will show you now how or the Azure policies that we have. So going to the policies, let's go to definitions and after it loads up. Let's go to search and for Azure DDoS. So we have around six here, but uh, mainly we have three built in policies. Let's have a look at them. So these last three, which are the built in policies, and you can find them also in your um, subscription. So the first one, for example, uh, policy makes sure the first definition of this here makes sure that all the, uh, the the DDoS protection should be enabled for all public IPs you have on the uh, application gateways, for example. The second one makes sure that all your VNets are protected by Azure DDoS standard. And this is, you know, you can enforce it so that any VNet you create, new VNet, it will be protected by DDoS protection. And then we have also the public IP, all the public IPs should have the resource logs enabled and sent to specific place, for example, the uh, work analytics logging. And uh, of course, we have also some um, custom ones and you can find, uh, for example, we have the uh, the policy uh, tag based policy, which uh, in, in a case where you have virtual uh, networks, you don't want to, for example, enable the DDoS on all your virtual networks. You can have you can enable them on specific ones with uh, specific tags. For example, you can have a tag like um, production. And once you attach this tag to your uh, VNets that you want, uh, you know, the DDoS protection on, only those will be enforced. Uh, the DDoS protection will be enforced on. And you can find uh, more policies in our uh, GitHub uh, page, Azure Network Security GitHub page. And you can, with one click, add them here and start using them. Now, with these 
policies, you will have the ability to enforce and also automate, um, you know, DDoS uh, protection. Uh, so you don't have to enable the, the, the logging uh, by IP basis, by uh, for all the public IPs, it can be done automatically. And the same thing, you can also make sure that all the virtual networks are protected by DDoS by default. Now, after having a look at the configuration, making sure you know that you have DDoS protection enabled, uh, the public IP logging enabled and the policies. Now let's have a look at the metrics and investigating uh, DDoS attacks. So let's go back to our public IP. And we go back to the public IPs here. So if we go to our APIM public IP. Now, under metrics, we can see if, if we go at the bottom here for the metrics under DDoS attack or not. And the one we, will, we want to start with is the inbound sync packets to trigger DDoS mitigation. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go back to a custom start line, which is 11 until 13 because that's when we had the DDoS attack. I'm going to apply it. Now, if you if you look here, we can see that at this here we don't have any data. And here we can see that we have the uh, 10,000 uh, packets per second uh, mitigation threshold for the uh, sync packets for TCP. And this is this started here because this is when we added this public IP to our DDoS plan. So that's when the policy is set. So this specific threshold, this is the threshold and when you know uh, the DDoS at the DDoS mitigation starts. So if you have um, you know packets under uh, the, the number under this, then it will not start until it goes over. And this threshold changes based on the traffic that you have and based on the scales, uh, the load balancing that's happening behind the public IP. Now let's have let's add another metric and let's have a look at the number of sync packets that we have. So if we go to the sync packet and we add this one, now you can see um, the orange line here, for example, which is the the count of sync count uh, packets are uh, under the threshold. And you can see here it's under. If we go here, it's under. And at certain point here, we can see that we had a DDoS attack. So we have a huge amount of traffic coming in and uh, it's it's all over the threshold and it goes for a few minutes until it goes back down. Now, how do we find out if the DDoS mitigation started? I'm going to add a, another um, chart here. And for this one, I'm going to be using the under DDoS attack or not. And let me add it. So if you look here, this one will show us zero and ones. Uh, the zero means that this specific public IP is not under DDoS attack. Once it goes to one, you can see here, it means that it's under DDoS attack. And if you look at the data, the chart under it, you see that it correlates to when the number of uh, traffic, the amount of traffic increased when we had the DDoS attack. And you can see here that the mitigation started and it stayed uh, enabled until a few minutes after the attack. And then after that, it went down. Now, um, looking at these logs, you know, we have an idea about uh, the, you know, when, uh, when we are under DDoS attack or not. However, we need, of course, more information about uh, how many, for example, packets we had, how many were allowed, how many denied, and this more specific information. And for that, I'll be going over to the logging. So, in our specific log analytics workspace where we are sending the logs, as I showed you in the uh, diagnostic settings. I'm going to run here first, uh, the first one, which will be the notification. So I'm going to run this one, as you can see here. So I'm going to run the Azure Diagnostics uh, category uh, DDoS protection notifications. And we can see here that we have four logs. So let's start with the first one here. And this one shows that it's in the resource group Salim CXC. So my resource group and the resource itself is apim.pip, which is our public IP. And the message is this is mitigation stopped. So 
as we look at the logs and we see that this one is later than uh, our first log. So if I open then this log, I can see under the message that it's mitigation started. Now, this log will inform you and tell you that the mitigation started, uh, for which public IP it started, and that and that it exceeded the threshold. The threshold is the one that I showed you earlier in the metrics. Um, now, this this specific log, you can create an alert based on this log, where once you receive this log, uh, that the mitigation started. Uh, you will receive, for example, an alert uh, SMS or email or whatever you prefer, you know, to configure on your uh, alert logging. Or you can also uh, make a uh, automation with, for example, Logic Apps and uh, have a specific, uh, you know, ticket created for you. So it depends on what you need. Uh, and this shows you like when the attack started. Now that we know that, you know, uh, attack started at this, this specific time. Now let's have a look at uh, the report, uh, the reporting. So the flow logs. So if we, if I paste here the flow logs, which is this one, we do where category equals our specific flow logs, and we run this query. Now this query will take some time and the reason is because this will show us all the logs for all the packets that were um, received at the moment of the mitigation, which means that this will show us each log for all the packets that were dropped and the packets that were also passed through. And we will see now specifically, you know, uh, how the logs are, you know, uh, mitigated and uh, what we have. So you can see there's a huge amount of logs. And if I, if I open one of them here, we can see that um, this is mitigation flow logs. And for this specific log, the packet was forwarded to the service, which means that this packet was not uh, dropped because it was deemed as a legitimate traffic and it was passed. So this, you know, this means that even with the mitigation starts, uh, the, the DDoS standard doesn't drop all the packets. However, it checks, you know, it makes test, and if it passes the test, it's legitimate traffic, and it will still pass it through. And we can see, for example, here the source public IP from where it was coming from, the specific source port, and of course the destination, which is our public IP, and the destination port. Now, if we go and look, we try with this one, for example. We go to the message. This is also packet was, was forwarded and we want to look at the ones that were dropped. So if we scroll a bit to the right here until we reach message, under message you can see, for example, this, this is packet was forwarded to the service and we have also here protocol, a protocol violation invalid uh, TCP sync. So if we go back here and we open this specific uh, log, then we see, for example, this one message was protocol violation valid TCP sync, which means that this was a legitimate traffic and it was dropped. And we can see the same information here from where it was coming from and with where, where it was going. Now, uh, these logs, you know, um, are you know, they're, they're a huge number of logs and uh, going by, you know, you, you can have like a few public IPs. So going by each public IP can be you know, a lot of work. And that's the reason why I will show you in a bit also our uh, workbook, which aggregates all this information. But of course, before doing that, let me show you also the last category of reports. So we have the uh, the report, which is this one. And okay, so let me there we have it. So this is the DDoS mitigation report, and these are the logs that we use for our reporting and for the uh, workbook. So if I open, so these these logs are incremental, which means that uh, they will be added uh, in the mid, uh, during the mitigation uh, each five minutes. There will be a new report, and there will be another one at the end called post mitigation report, which will have all the uh, details for the mitigation attack. Now, if I go down here, I can find information. For example, the specific uh, resource, which is our public IP, and then. Under here, we can see like, you know, the attack vectors, which type of attacks we have the traffic, how many packets we had, like 780, um, which type of traffic we have, the protocols, for example, here, mostly were TCP, um, drop reasons, 
and also top like source countries and other information. Now this information is really useful. However, as you can see, it can be a bit difficult, you know, looking at this uh, here in the login. And that's why we have a workbook and I will show it to you now. So our Azure DDoS protection workbook aggregates all the information that you saw in the logging and it puts it here uh, with all the public IPs that you have. So you don't have to go uh, pub, uh, each you know, IP by, uh, by itself, but you can have all your public IPs here and you can choose which public IPs you'd like to use, which we'd like to see here. And for example, in this case, I'm going to have a time range of 90 days. So I want to see what, uh, you know, the, the information for the last 90 days and I want to have a report. And you can see information, for example, here, the traffic overview. Um, so the num total number of traffic, how many packets were dropped, uh, how many TCP packets and other information. And here, for example, it will show you the last 10 DDoS reports. So you can see, for example, last 10 mitigations that you had. And if you want, you can select one of these mitigations or one of these, let's call them attacks. And then you can see the specific data for it. For now, I will unselect it so we can see everything. Um, here we can see also uh, specific resources that you're protecting. And then if I go a bit down here, here we have information, for example, like um, the protocol. So for example, uh, it was 92% TCP and other 7% uh, were other. The attacks, for example, continent of origin were 80% North America, 15% Europe. And we can have also specific countries. For example, here you can see from where the attack was coming from, the AS numbers, and also the specific drop reasons why it was uh, why the packets were dropped and what was the reason for them. Now you have also all of this information in specific tables and you can export this information. And if I go down here, we have the same as we saw earlier, the uh, specific logs, uh, raw data for mitigation logs and also flow logs. So this is the first plate. We have other two. The second one is DDoS metrics. So DDoS metrics will show you information, for example, uh, that we saw in metrics, but uh, this information is aggregated here. So you can see, for example, the uh, packet count for all your public IPs or the one you have selected, the average, uh, the, the byte count. You can also see, for example, the thresholds that you have for your public IPs, um, the inbound TCP packet packets that are also like DDoS and all and the when the uh, public IPs were under DDoS attack or not. So this is the second page which gives you also an overview on the metrics. On our last page on DDoS investigation here, if I scroll here a bit down, we can see uh, information such as uh, the allowed traffic during mitigation. So you can see, if, uh, you know, uh, the allowed traffic from which ports they were coming from. Uh, and you can see also the ports that, that were used for the uh, that were dropped. So the, the ports for that were uh, malicious traffic. And here you can see the top attacking IPs. So top attacking source IPs that were targeting the uh, your your uh, infrastructure. And you can see here like, you know, how the number of uh, packets increase. And you can see from where the attack was coming from. So this this work uh, workbook should give you you know a very clear and aggregated view of uh, where the attack was coming from, uh, you know what you can do to mitigate it, uh, how what was mitigated, and the uh, specific services that were running. Um, so with this uh, information, you know I will be ending the, uh, the 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 session. I hope it was uh, useful for you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to. Uh, post them and we will be uh, happy to answer them. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, the team's been great with answering questions. We do have a few that are worth reiterating. Um, the first one is, uh, can you protect non-Azure resources? Um, yeah, so I can I can answer that question. So it depends on the depends on the resources. So for example, like if you have on-prem resources. Um, then, uh, and these resources, for example, uh, are connected to your application gateway or, uh, you know, you're sending them through the application gateway, then yes, you can use the Azure DDoS standard to send, you know, to protect your application gateway. And then if you have workloads, for example, on, in your uh, on-prem going through the application gateway, then you will have the DDoS protection. 
Um, but that, of course, always depends on the type of use cases that you have or the architecture. Um, and, you know, uh, we, we have also, I will provide the link to the different types of architecture where you can use the Azure data standard. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question we have is, can we see or set up alerts through Defender for Cloud or ingest that to uh, Microsoft Sentinel and use a workbook to automate the response when a DDoS attack is detected at the Azure front door level? Um, yeah, so so on the Azure Defender for Cloud, right? Um, it, it, you can use the Azure Defender for Cloud to get the notification when the DDoS at the mitigation started, and it will show you there that the DDoS mitigation starts, and you can create an alert or, of course, an automation, you know, to do a specific action. So that's definitely possible. Now, um, the DDoS standard currently still doesn't support Azure front door. Um, so if you have an Azure front door and you want to use Azure DDoS standard, then you should have a Azure firewall or application gateway behind that uh, front door. So the traffic going through the front door, then application gateway or Azure firewall, and you can have there the DDoS uh, standard uh, plan enabled. That, that's where you can have the protection. So that's one of the ways how to enable it in, in your in infrastructure. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question we have is, does Azure DDoS protection come native to services like Azure Databricks or Azure Kubernetes, or is it just a standard protection? Yeah, so so other so Azure DDoS standards, right? Um, it's there mostly to protect your work workloads um, where you have a specific uh, public IP. Now, for other services, uh, for example, past services where you don't uh have the public ip or you don't you're not using a public ip so you're not responsible for for it then the ddos ddos infrastructure itself it has ddos uh, protection which will protect your resources so for other past services where you don't manage the public ip you don't need this standard because you're already under uh the ddos protection which is available for all azure infrastructure now for for um, for workloads or for public IPs where you manage the public IP and you you have the resource, there is there is the you have the workload behind it, and that's where you should have the DDoS standard, and that's because the DDoS standard protects your your workloads against those DDoS attacks. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question we have is if we have uh, a if we constantly have a DDoS attack under the threshold, what should we do? Should we create a custom plan to mm -hmm. handle that? Um, so, so currently, like uh, as you've seen, like in the configuration, there is not. You can't, for example, uh, configure um, the specific threshold. But if you have the case where you're always uh, on the on the DDoS, like you know, you're always meeting the DDoS threshold, and that's just because of legitimate traffic and not DDoS attack. Then you can always open a uh, support ticket with the rapid response team, and they will work with you on increasing the threshold and, and investigating, you know, if you're under DDoS attack or not. However, um, since you know, if you're paying for the DDoS standard plan, then you already have the support, so you can you can always engage your uh, rapid response team and have the threshold increased. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question we have is. What actions might I take when looking at the workbook summary metrics investigation if protection has already mitigated the attack? I.e., how would I use the dashboards in a useful way? Yeah, so there's you know um, there's a few ways to use it, right? So the the idea for DDoS standard is that the customer doesn't have to do any extra configuration. You simply add the VNet uh, where you have the public IPs and you're protected. There is nothing um, extra to do from your side. However, after each DDoS attack, um, all like at least from the all the customers, you've seen that they always need a report um, on the specific attack and the mitigation you know that happened. And of course, you also want to look at if your traffic, your legitimate traffic at that uh, time at the, under DDoS was 
uh, pass through to your services or not, which is very important for customers. So you need to make sure that uh, the DDoS mitigation works correctly and the legitimate traffic is still passed through to your resources. Uh, so that's one of the biggest reasons you can use it. The other reason, of course, is after each uh, DDoS attack, um, most users need a, to create a report to show like, you know, that uh, there was a DDoS attack and we mitigated it suc successfully. So using the workbook, all that job is done for you. You don't need to do any extra work. You already have the uh, report and you can just use that to uh, to to, uh, to to show like to, to use that report for um, for the DDoS attack. Great. Um, that seems to be all the questions. So I'd like to thank you, Salim and David, for being our guests today and for an excellent presentation. And thank you to the rest of the team who helped answer questions. At the same time, I would like to remind the listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit our landing page at aka.ms slash security community. And while there, you'll find easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to our security products and their communities. A good start would be browsing our bite-sized product videos, Ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. Please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash Azure NetSec feedback. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.